how to loop over an object in JavaScript. In today's video, you're gonna learn why you can't use a for of loop, a different for loop that you can use, and then also using object methods like object.keys, dot values, dot entries, as well as on top of those, using some array methods. So first off, I have this object here on line four, and it just has four different properties in it. Prop one, prop two, prop three, prop four. And on line 12 here, I try to use a for loop and just counts a log the value of each property of my object. So I do for const value of object. And what you're gonna see here is when I run this, I actually get an error. Object is not iterable. You can't iterate over an object in JavaScript just using a for loop. So how can you loop over an object if you can't use just a for of loop? Well, JavaScript actually gives you a for in loop that allows you to loop over the keys of an object. So instead of using for const value of object, I can use for const key in object and use the in keyword here. And this is gonna loop over all the keys of my object. And if I council log the key in each iteration of this for in loop, what you're gonna see is I get prop one, prop two, prop three, prop four. And you might be thinking, okay, that, that's cool and all, but what if you want the values of the object? You don't actually just want the keys of the object. Well, you can still use the for in loop, but you just kind of have to take it one step further. In which here on line 22, I have four cons key in object, so I use my for in loop here again. But what I do instead is first I console log the key, just like I did before. But if I want to get the value of all of my keys, then I can index my object and pass in the key. So I'm using my key variable and if you haven't seen my video on accessing objects using variables, you can definitely check that out. I actually, I think that's my last JavaScript video, but you can check that out after this. But here, basically using square brackets, you can pass any expression into square brackets. So I can pass a variable in here and this is gonna give me the value of my object at whatever key I pass in. So if I run this, you're gonna see that I count a log the property key and then I count log the value and then the property key and then the value. As you can see here, prop one is assigned to the string one. Just like here, prop one counts logs one. So you can still access the values using a for in loop. You'll just have to index your object using the keys that you have. Now, JavaScript also gives you a few different ways to loop over objects. And one of those is using the object.keys method. So object.keys is a method in JavaScript that you can use for free. JavaScript gives you this global object here, just capital O project. And you can access the dot keys method on this global object. You don't have to create this anywhere. This is given to you for free within a JavaScript runtime. And this dot keys method here, it takes an object. And what it's gonna return is an array of all of the keys of that object. So here I use object.keys and I pass in my object. That's gonna return all of the keys of my pass in object. And if I wanna loop over those keys or that array of keys, then I can just use a for of loop. So here I'm saying for const key of object.keys passing in my object. So this is gonna loop over the array that's returned from calling object.keys and passing in my object. And if I console log, all of my keys here, you're gonna see, I get prop one, two, three, and four. Cause I iterate over all of my keys here. So this is pretty similar to using just the for in loop here. Now, you can also use this overall global object to iterate over the values because it has the dot values method on the overall global object as well. So here I do the same thing that I did with object.keys. I pass in my object to object.values, and that's gonna return an array of all the values of my object. And then right here, I just use a for loop to iterate over 
this returned array from calling object.values. Now you don't necessarily need to do this all inline. You could assign the returned array to some other constant and then iterate over that array here. And then I could iterate over this values array, but I'm just gonna keep doing it in line here. Just wanted to show you that this is totally valid as well. But here I iterate over all the values with my for loop. And if I run this code, you're gonna see I get all the values of my object. One, two, three, and four. Now, what if you want all the values and you want all the keys? Do you have to call the object.keys method and then call the object.values method and then kind of use those? No, you can actually use the object.entries method. So here on line 38, I use the entries method that also exists on my overall object, that global object. So here it works the same way as object.keys and values in which you just pass it in object, but instead of returning just an array of all the keys or an array of all the values, what it actually is going to return here is an array of arrays. And every nested array within this is going to be a key value pair of your object. Okay, so I pass in my object and it's gonna return an array. And within the overall array that it returns, every value of that array is going to be an array that is a key value pair of all of my properties and values of my object. So it's gonna return an array, and within that array, it's gonna have an array that contains prop one, comma, value one. And then it's gonna have another array that has prop two, comma, value two. So it's gonna be an array of arrays of key value pairs. And if I iterate over this, because it returns an array, so I can iterate over all of my key value pairs, and if I council log every entry here, what you're gonna see is that I iterate over my array and every iteration, it's gonna return an array of key value pa pairs here, which you can see the key and the value, the key and the value, okay? And the reason these keys look like strings here and they don't really look like strings here up in this object when I'm defining my object is because JavaScript's gonna coerce these properties to strings anyways, so it's already going to assume, even if I don't put these in quotes here, that it's going to be a string. All right. So you can use the object.entries method to get key value pairs. Now, one kind of neat little trick that you can use here is you can actually destructure your entries here right out of the gates when you're looping over all of your entries. So here, if I destructure this with my array syntax, because every iteration, it's going to be a key value pair that's an array. I can actually get both the key and the value here. And then if I console log my key as well as my value, now you're going to see that I automatically pull out my key and value here and I destructure them as I'm iterating over all of my entries. Okay. Now you can also combine your object.keys, object.values, and object.entries methods with all of the array methods. Because since object.entries, keys, and values returns arrays, then you can map over those arrays, you can for each over those arrays, and that prevents you from even needing to use like a for of loop or something like that. So just to show you an example of that, here I use my object.values method, I pass in my object, and that's gonna return an array of all of my objects. And then I can chain on the dot map method to this returned array from calling object.values. So now I'm mapping over the returned array and now I could perform some operation on these values. So here, let me just make all of these values plural. So I'm gonna add an S to all of my values. So now what I would expect is that this is going to return an array of all of my values with my objects, but I'm going to make them plural. I'm adding an S to all of them. So if I console log my values now, you see that I now get an array of ones, twos, threes, and fours. Because my object.values method returns all of my values, then I map over those values and I return 
an array that has all of my values with an S appended to it. All right. So this can actually be a really clean way to work with your values or your keys and perform some operation on them by just chaining on the map method or the for each or reduce or any of those kind of array methods that you have access to. All right. So that is how you can loop over objects in JavaScript. Make sure to subscribe for future JavaScript tutorials and web development tutorials, and I'll see you in that next one.